When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. When the world seems to shine like you've had too much wine, that's amore. Bells will ring, tingle, ling, ling, tingle, ling, ling, and you'll sing Vita Bella. Hearts will play tippy tippy tay, tippy tippy tay, like a guitar and Hello, I'm Paulie. Um, tonight's a tip top historical episode, mate, because it's all about the historical stuff we've done in the show. Um, you might have seen these films before, but we've put them all into one historical episode, so you can get like a proper view of the history of the world and that, as told by us. So um, our first film goes back to them like triangular buildings and that, the pyramids. This is it, mate. Pizza's Egyptian story. Hey, Pharaoh, I've got this bloke outside from Lebanon. He says he's got good food for you. Food? Oh, much loved and much abused, noble eunuch that you are, your exalted pharaoh is always ready for another gastronomic experience. Bring him in. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ah, hmm. ha! Quite attractive. Yes, show me what you've got. See this, bro? It's called a shwarme. Everyone else but calls it a kebab. Oh, kebab. Kebab? Oh, ye Ramses, Cleopatras and Nefertitis. I've seen kebab. This isn't just a kebab. Pharaoh, it's a lot more than that. Watch, and I'll show you. <laughs> See what you do, Pharaoh? <laughs> you open it up, right? It's round. It's a circle. And then you put a piece of this, onion, piece of tabu, and you put pieces of your favourite food on it. Pieces of ham, pieces of salami. Salami's good. Cheese, goat's cheese, whatever cheese you want. Cheese is good. And voila, you got pizza, bro. What do you reckon? <laughs> pieces in the pizza, that's, it's good, Pharaoh. <laughs> it's hideous, child. No, no, it's no good, Pharaoh, you're right. In my long, colourful, gourmet development, I've tasted tongue of peacock. Grilled testicle of Spanish bull and the matador. Virgin sturgeon's urgent row. And you bring me this ghastly looking thing. Oh. oh, but you'll do quite nicely. Guard, take him to my chambers, scrub him thoroughly in fresh camel milk, shave him, and I'll join him later. <laughs> Now, my delicious delivery boy, I'll give you a taste of the real cover. <laughs> Man, if I wanted this, I would have taken my food to Greece. <laughs> so as you can see, the Falzonis, we've been very influential, like, in influencing the world and that. And this next film will show you how we were the first ones to find Australia, mate. Not that pumpkin Captain Cook, mate, with his hokey hat. It was a little tough choco, mate, back in the Falzoni family tree. Oh, what happened on this ship, huh? You were the last one steering, weren't you? Huh? We probably came under attack by the ones we're fighting. Hold on. You did not fall asleep behind the wheel, did you? No. Psst! Bazonius! Hey, yeah, the fucking is Montana. Are you sure? Positive. Wake up, you lads! This is like the Titanic! We're going to hit a big rock! Where are we, do you think? Africa. Definitely Africa. But Maximus, look over here. Look at that hut is up till the season. I never heard about animals like this in Africa. Look at them. Everything is big here in Africa, stupid. Look, big rabbits. No, 
Now go get me some food. Go! <laughs> what do you think you are doing? Look, well, how do you expect me to get food if I don't have the stabber? Go now. The guards will guide you. Leave! You know, f***ing Maximus. There's not even a pointed stick. He's got the sword. He could catch the animal. And look at this. My good sandal. Man! I'm bored. Go find something to amuse me. <laughs> Maximus! You're gonna love this, look! must have been placed by the gods. Come, let's look. No, oh, it's a stuck. <laughs> no, no, it actually does come out. It works for me. Like I've been using this to catch the fishes. I think it's bigger than your one. Give me. I, I touch my sword. Hey, you listen to me. I'm a Roman. I have a priority. Look, don't tell me this big story again. Rome this, Rome that. Why don't you relax? Look where we are. Shut up! Haven't you heard the expression, when in Phoenicia, do as the Phoenicians do? I? I said shut up! And then look, all you do is complain about the work that I do. Shower. I've had it up to here. I quit your Roman army. I'm finished. No more. Goodbye. Goodbye. Desertion is punishable by death. Well, come on, then. I'll go, you. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, So, as well as discovering Australia, like, the Falzonis were actually influencing, like, religion and that too. As you can see in this next film, without, like, St. Paul, there would be no Jesus. All right, fellas. It is plain to see all the miracles on earth have been performed. <laughs> you can tell. So now it is time for Jesus the Elite to share a meal with his boys. Man, it's hungry work when you're the fully sickest son of God. Hey Jesus, can I just ask you, man, because I'm getting a bit pissed since you turned this water into wine. What percentage alcohol is it, man? Like, am I going to be over the limit? Yeah, bro. 
Don't ride the donkey home. St. Pauli, where is Habibi Judas? Look, Jesus, mate, I don't want to alarm you, but hey, we suspect Judas is working with the Romans, man. There's rumours floating around. The saints and me, we've heard them. He's gone into the witness protection, mate. You know, he could be an informer, man. Well, you better watch your back, mate. Boys, what's going on here? Judas, man, you missed half the miracles. Where have you been? Nowhere, man, nowhere. What are you talking about, man? What do you mean? Don't bullshit me, bro. The boys reckon you're working with the Romans. Is it true, Habibi Judas? Mate, that's a load of bullshit, man. I'm telling you, it's bullshit. I was busy, right? I was busy because I was out there handing out Bibles. Yeah, I was handing out Bibles. I was putting the Bibles in a hotel room. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Also, my chariot, man. My chariot had a flat tire. I had to change it, give it a tune up. I swear to God, man. I mean, not you, but like, you gotta believe me. See, boys, Judas is okay. And now it's time for my greatest miracle yet. Hey, is this a miracle where we pick up some chicks? Habibi Judas, once you learn this miracle, bro, the chicks will come running, man. <laughs> All right, mate. I swear, stop it. You're getting me horny. It's time I give you 12 impossibles, the recipe for the best food ever to be eaten in heaven or earth. It's my old man's favourite, man. First, you get the bread. Followed by some salami. And then the cheese. Goat's cheese is the best. And then some ham. What do you reckon we put some chilies on that? St. Pauli, what a brilliant idea. I love you so much. Let's not go that far, Jesus. Just make the food. Freeze, Jesus! Get up and move away from the bread. Hey, Jesus, I've been wanting to bring you down for a long time. I can't f***ing believe this. Who's betrayed me? He's been working with us for months. It's your best friend, Judas. No fucking do! Look at this. See, Jesus, he's wearing a wire. I f***ing knew it. This one's for you, Jesus. <laughs> What's that, bro? It's a nail gun, Jesus. Just for you. Uh, now, we're going to skip forward in history to like where my great-grandfather, Nino Falzoni, was like the Maltese Italian like world boxing champion. And he's taken on this stooge from a country where like they're naturally skinny because they've got no food. And what a top boxing champion he was. Some have said he looks like a bit like Mario from Mario Brothers and that. But mate, I think that's just like Choco stereotyping, mate. He was a handsome bloke. It's 1929 and the middleweight world championship is being contested by Alfredo Falzoni from Malta and Mahatma Gandhi from India. When you shove a cow down your throat and make you beef burgers. <laughs> After what can only be described as silly buggers at the weigh-in, the fight begins. Gandhi starts showboating for the crowd. Gandhi tags Falzoni with a short left. I'm the greatest fighter in the world! <laughs> but here comes Falzoni with a series of uppercuts and a huge right hook. Oh, he's got Gandhi on the ropes. Go Nini man, he slammed him that stooge. But you know, anyway, look, after that, Ninu got so big and famous, mate, he wanted to avoid the spotlight. In fact, he was the first celebrity in the world. You didn't know that, did you? Because you don't read your history books, because, mate, they don't put Choco history in them books. What, Captain Cook, that's all they talk about, mate. Anyway, Ninu, he's moved to Germany to avoid the spotlight. 
you know, because of the paparazzis and that. And he's gone undercover as, like, just a potato farmer. But he still had them boxing skills, even in his old age. But there's one thing to be said about the Falzonis through history, mate. Like, we're not stooges. Because, like, as you'll see in this next film, sometimes it's smart to, like, throw a big punch and a hook, and other times it's better to duck, weave, and, like, piss off quickly. And that's what this Falzoni's done. Right up, blokes. As you can see, Johnny Turks occupy the top of those ridges. Now, your job is to get off this boat, get up those ridges, break through that machine gun fire and occupy those trenches. By the way, the POM has got all our rifles. So we'll be using the good old bayonet. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Can I ask a question? Yep. I was just checking. You want us to run up, you call these ridges? Yep. But it's mountain. 360 degrees straight up. That's a one. And you're saying you're not going to give us a gun? No, just this knife here, this little one. Bayonet, soldier. Bayonet. Boy, you got a problem with that? No, sir. Uh, just was checking this thing. Now keep in mind, fellas, when you're out there, you're doing it for king and country, for the mighty British Empire. So we'll have three chips. Where'd that little foreign fella go? Run into bullets! That's crazy! Better to be with those turkeys up there on that big hill. Yeah, that's the smart move. I joined them, and I hear they have the delicious kebabs. Now, this next film is when Bobo's old man and mine have come to Australia off the boat because back then, mate, they wouldn't let us shock those travelling planes, mate. No, they wouldn't. But now we own the planes. Sucked in, man. Because we, like, built all the houses and that. And them other stooges, they're living in fibro, mate. <laughs> who's, who's doing good now? Yeah. Well, anyway, back to the story. Bobo, what kind of pizzas did your, like, old man bring from Italy? Small, thin and cheesy. So, so Bobo had to improve on that, and that's like been part of what we've shown you on the show. But let's go back to the story. This is a good bit right here. This Bradman's mate, look at this. We come off this boat for three months now. You know, what do you blokes think of this country? Gigliori, what do you think? This is food. She's a no good. Who can eat this meat pie? Eh? Mate, even when we starved during the war, I never eat something so bad like that. You're right, my friend. This one here, full of dead animal, I'm telling you. This one, platypussy, kangaroo, what this kangaroo? Woof, woof. Gigliotti used to make pizza shop in Italy. Why don't you do that here, mate, in Australian? Mm, you're right, Felzoni. Maybe I open a pizzeria with the big and fair, tasty pizza, just like out in the whole country. Eh? And then there was this cricket game. I mean, what is this game? They walk around in this, in this girly clothes, and it's slow. There's no running, there's no sweating. That's not a sport. That's a girls' club. <laughs> eh? Mate, very stupid mate, this game. I see one man, he get ball like this, one ball, rub against another ball. What is this mate? They make with the genitals. I don't understand this game. I want to learn, but the other day I saw the cricket player and I walked up to him politely to ask about what's the rules or these ways they play. Excuse me, sir. I think you play this what is cricketing thing. Could you explain it to me since I come to this country? Oh, you have a small one. Um, 
What, what's the rules of this cricket game? Do you mind? I am trying to urinate. Is it really a game? It's not, is it? It's a joke, isn't it? I know what you are. You're one of those... Um... Hey, the penis. I know what you are. You're one of those chocolate frogs, aren't you? Aren't you? What this chocolate frog? After this, I find out he's this famous cricket player, this Donald Bladham, something like this, you know? You come out here and you try and destroy our white Australia? Why don't you go home? Don't do that. Leave this country and leave us alone to do don't, our own don't say wonderful that. white Australian liberal thing instead don't of you say that to me. polluting us with that silly football soccer thing with that white ball that you kick around like idiots. I, I warn you. Game. This is a game, a gentleman's game, a bat and a ball and a wicket and a crease. That's what I call a game. How did he think he could beat me? Was he stupid? You're the riffraff, that's what you are. So you push my limit. piss off, because I'm trying to have a piss. it's wrong that like my old man has smashed this bloke because mate you know he was cheesing him up he was making fun of him due to his ethnicity and that what's wrong with multiculturalisms bradmans hey what you don't like us chocos mate and now look at me i'm wearing your white suit i've bought this is donald bradman's old suit mate look at this sucked in mate i'm wearing it huh and i'm loving it and i'm doing very chalky things while i'm wearing it sucked in mate but look I was insulted, I would not leave this there. After that day, I stalk him every game. I go to every game he see. That man, idiot! That man is the idiot! He is the idiot! Come on, everyone, Stooge! You're a Why don't you go home to Pakistan? Donald! Donald! Donald is a duck! Take a duck, Donald Duck! Hey, Donald shut is a the duck! Bother up. A duck. And I call out to him, hey, Donald, Donald, Donald Duck, this and that, I say to him. Donald! Donald! Donald, over here, over here, Donald, Donald, for sure, mock to you. I don't know who left you off the boat because you never will be an Australian, a white Australian, and you have God. Hey, Donald, present for you, mate. Hey, hey. 100 runs every. Donald, 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 oh. Donald, 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 oh. Oh, and what a sad day for Australia it is. Donald Bladman misses out on a perfect 100 run average by only one run. Don't worry, Don. We still love you, Cobber. Look, I'll admit that I might have been a bit heavy while emphasising, like, the Choco influence on the history of the world. But come on, mate. We've done it all. I mean, you know, we did. But look, I'll tell you what. I'll be a good bloke and I'll show one little film of the Anglo influence in Australia and it's all to do with Dave O'Dinkum's old man. It's actually a very romantic story. We should have played this on Valentine's Day. And a splendid day for Australia, as Queen Elizabeth, monarch of the English Empire, visits lowly Australians in Sydney for the opening of this strange ethnic-looking building. And here's the Queen in all her splendour, getting a private tour of the Opera House. To show you some of the innovations we put into place here. They're extraordinary. What do you call these things here? Those things. Those, those are called lamps, Your Highness. No! Help! You me like a corgi! Come on, here! Fly for me! Well, that's the end of our historical episode. Now, I just want to, like, let you know that we did check all of the facts, didn't we, Bobo? Yes, Paulie. We went to the Encyclopedias Britannicus and had professors with eggheads check out everything, didn't we, mate? Yes, Paulie. So, look, we're going to come back next week with something else. Um, but, like, I just want to say, next time we do films of historical stuff, there'll be more chicks. Is that good? Oh, yeah. My lover, how you dance to Roomba. 
but take us some advice, Paisano. Learn how to mumble. If you're gonna be a square, you ain't gonna go nowhere. Yeah.